Are my private calls, texts, emails, and data being collected by the US government? Well, maybe. We will explore this subject further shortly, but one thing is certain. You are being monitored online in ways you may not have considered. Individuals and other entities, as well as the government, are included. If you are a student of the Bible, especially Bible prophecy and eschatology, you will clearly understand that current world events, such as the pandemic, conflicts around the world, and government crackdown on Christians who stand firmly on biblical truth, are all end times events that Jesus foretold would occur shortly before his second coming. You must remain cautious, because your adversary prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 2008, Congress approved even more surveillance. This time, technology played a huge role, because by now, the United States had become the world's information superhighway, and much of the globe's communications were routed inside the country. FISA, that 30-year-old law that was meant to spy inside the country, was used as a prism to spy on the outside world. That allowed the government to monitor foreigners who were chatting on American wires. How does that affect Americans? Well, all this spying on foreigners gives the US government backdoor access to incidentally collect your information. Emails, live chats, photos, file transfers, even if you are not the target. All this is happening without the standard warrants we've come to associate with suspected criminal wrongdoing, all in the name of national security. If you're not an American and you're living outside the country, collecting your communication is fair game. But whether the government can read it, well, that all depends on the strength of your encryption. Limiting the amount of personal information that the government and unscrupulous tech corporations can track or monitor is one method to safeguard yourself and your family. Atlas VPN is an ideal solution. A monthly subscription of $1.99 can safeguard you against online criminals and corporations who are continuously attempting to steal your personal information, password, and internet data. Whether you realize it or not, companies are tracking and collecting your online activities. Click the link in the description to download Atlas VPN and start protecting yourself and your family today for just $1.99 per month. The good news is that Atlas VPN provides a 30-day money-back guarantee. Vision Unsealed uses Atlas VPN to keep our information safe, secure, and private. You should as well. In today's dark world, a single data breach can put your personal information in the hands of evil individuals. Atlas VPN is the greatest VPN on the market right now. It was developed by top cybersecurity specialists and IT professionals, and it routes all of your internet traffic through an encrypted channel. It conceals your IP address even when utilizing public Wi-Fi. It prevents harmful links, advertisements, and trackers from being displayed. Furthermore, it automatically analyzes leaked databases and notifies you of any previous or recent breaches involving your personal information such as your email address, username, password, or social security number. If you sign up now, you can be fully secured for as little as $1.99 per month for all of your devices with a single membership. See the link in the video description below. Download the app, have a peace of mind that no government or corporation will be able to monitor you online. The government is collecting information about who we're calling. When my children make phone calls, the government is collecting who they are, who they are talking to. Now, it's true they're not listening to the conversation, but it hardly seems that, like, that that justifies it. If there was a federal agent, an FBI guy, who followed me around, knew when I went to work, knew who I met with, but didn't sit in on the meetings, they would call that metadata. But that doesn't make it any less disturbing. The government should not be surveying law-abiding citizens who have committed no crime and following who they are talking to. Uh, what's really going on here, part of it is what's called social network analysis, which is a fancy way of saying the government wants to know who people are talking to and what communities they live in, uh, whether they've committed a crime or not. I think that's very dangerous, and I think this is the first, you know, this is the tip of the iceberg. We're going to find out that it's not just Verizon. We're going to find out that the scope, duration is worse than we thought, and what's more, there's been no transparency. This, we're all learning this set years into it, I find all of that deeply troubling. By the way, if you are new to our channel, please subscribe and enable the bell icon to receive notifications when we post new weekly videos. Help us spread the end time messages to our world. Like and share our videos. Thanks for your support. The Pope has called for a new world order, as have the presidents of the United States. And now is the time when things are shifting. We're gonna, there's going to be a new world order out there. 
and we've got to lead it, and we've got to unite the rest of the free world in doing it. And other prominent individuals, controlling you, how you think, what you eat, where you live, and even how you worship, is one of the primary goals of a new world order. The threat of death is the highest way to exercise control over someone. And with a current core of world leaders and government leaders wanting to take control of everyone, they have chosen the most powerful thing they can choose, and that's fear, and that's fear. So we took Romans 13, and we said, that does not give the government the power to stop the church from meeting. And we said, we're going to meet. There were critics who said, well, you're disobeying the government. This was never rebellion against the government. This was obedience to Christ. You judge whether we obey God or men. So the government has overstepped its bounds, way overstepped its bounds. God never, ever ordained government to do what government is doing today. It's way beyond God's intention. Government had a simple purpose, punish evildoers and protect those who do good. And to show you how perverted the government is, it is basically committed to protecting the people who do evil and punishing the people who do good. It's been reversed. The devil is using the media to desensitize the masses and expose them to all kinds of lies and spiritualism that contradict biblical truth. The groundwork for the rise of the Antichrist is being laid right in front of our very eyes. Within the priesthood in Roman Catholicism, there's a special group of priests called Jesuits. The new pope, for the first time ever in history, is from the Jesuits, give themselves on the surface to education and, and to care for the poor. In the long war on the truth, the most formidable and relentless and deceptive enemy has always been Roman Catholicism. And at the top of the pile, the true church has always understood the pope as a usurper of the headship of Christ over his church. The reformers brought, uh, brought this to its focal point under Martin Luther's launch. Even at the cost of their own lives, they understood this and they preached this and the Catholic church went about executing them whenever and wherever it could. It was Martin Luther who said that the reign of Antichrist is the papacy, and all the people did say, Amen. A holy terror seized their souls. It was Antichrist whom they beheld seated on the pontifical throne. Luther made that clear. Many people who claim to be Christians are more concerned with external and emotional experience than with biblical truth. Hollywood, government agencies, and large tech corporations have created an ideal atmosphere in which they can track your daily actions and affect your behavior in a variety of ways. It is quite easy to control you when these entities have access to everything about you. And the Bible warned in Revelation 13, verse 17, that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. While people's realities are being shaped through edutainment, Hollywood always foretells a future where the majority of the planet has turned into a global surveillance state. And as previously shown, what was once seen as being just a form of entertainment has now become an everyday reality. Zubinir Brzezinski also documented that there will be a closer and tighter surveillance on civilians and this will be as a result of the digital technology of the multinational corporations. Imagine a world in which you are not permitted to purchase with cash in grocery stores, drug stores, or gas stations due to a cashless system. This is a global trend among some of the leading corporations, and Visa, the global credit card company, is also another company that is also pushing for a cashless system to be set up. Visa sits at the center of a global network of more than 1,500 banks linked by 1.5 million miles of secure fiber optic lines. And it does seem more convenient when you can just click one button and make a transaction in just seconds without going into your wallet and taking out coins and paper. But cashless is going into a direction where there is no reverse in the trends. And when one of the big four American multinational technology companies pursues a business partnership with one of the largest investment banking enterprises in the world, the US-based Goldman Sachs. Everything the geopolitician Zbigniew Brzezinski said half a century ago is now coming to pass before our eyes. And your access to the digital world is prohibited because you have not accepted the mark of the beast. Imagine being unable to communicate with your loved ones by phone, text messages, or social media because you refused to bow to the one world spiritual leader. If you think these are mere conspiracies, think again, because that is where we are headed. The Pope is portrayed as a godly and moral leader 
who not only seeks the spiritual well-being of all people, including non-Catholics, but also strives to make the environment a better and safer place for all people. The Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis I, is the most powerful geopolitician on this earth. He sits on a throne between two angels, a model of God's throne, clearly showing whose place he wants to take on this earth. He meets with the founders and current heads of the technotronic digital age, whose companies collect all of our data and is preparing for a global cashless society. The chairman and CEO of the largest multinational mass media and entertainment conglomerate, Disney's Bob Iger, also visits the Vatican to get a photo op with the Pope. And others all over the business world flood to the Vatican, taking economic advice from the Bishop of Rome. The Vatican has also attracted some of the most famous individuals on this earth to discuss climate change and the effects of geoengineering. This Jesuit Pope outwardly advises the energy companies on caring for the environment, but is covertly investing into these very same monopolies. Your average person would find it absurd if you were to tell them that this system wants to take over the world. She has openly declared it in her own words, it's not a secret. Only a few scattered people who still diligently study the prophetic charter are aware of this. The truth is that the Pope is not innocent. All roads will eventually lead to Rome, whether you believe it or not, whether you agree or disagree, but it will not last forever. The papacy has exactly the same thing because the Pope is today the representative of the Babylonian religion. So when he says the Mass, he has a round wafer disc, it's roundness coming as a symbol of Baal. And after a Mass, it is placed in a monstrance, which is a half moon. A Vatican insider, Dr. Malachi Martin, has said that based on the message of Mary, in a personal visitation, John Paul believes there will come a day when the heart of Islam, already attuned to the figures of Christ and of Christ's mother Mary, will receive the illumination. I like these words, you know, they, they sort of ring once you get to know them. It needs a second Fatima, in which they will recognize him as God's vicar on earth. So who must be recognized as God's vicar? The Pope must be recognized as God's vicar. Then, with fellow travelers like the Church of England, the Episcopal Church, and others of like mind, the Pope could be worshipped as the infallible Holy Father by over one half of the world's population. I'd like to correct him. All of the world's population. But that's besides the point. I beheld and the same horn, that is, the Pope, made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, but the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion, to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven, shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Daniel 7, verses 21 to 22, and 26 to 27. So how will all roads lead to Rome? You carefully conditioned minds into the fantasy of the Middle Ages, when papal Rome once ruled most of Europe so you can familiarize the world's mind into the past by using the most popular shows. You then cleverly and carefully implant Roman Catholic imagery into the public. This will slowly break down people's resistance when they see heroes like Robin Hood, played by Russell Crowe, and John Wick, played by Keanu Reeves, and via musicians like Beyonce. This will put people's guards down to the papacy. Then you can create the atmosphere of the Inquisition of the Dark Ages by encouraging people to spy on their neighbors and the whole world will be reliving once again the time period of the Dark Ages. While they become distracted, the Vatican, who has the most ancient and the most experienced State Department in existence, will continue what she has been doing for over one and a half millennia, covering the width of five continents, dealing with the different nations and kingdoms and expanding her influence. But she knows that she can only accomplish her lifelong dream with the assistance of a much younger power who she is only second to with the number of nations she has diplomacy with, the United States. Is it even remotely possible that the U.S. is assisting the Pope in her ultimate goal of becoming the supreme head of the One World Religion? Since 1984, the United States has continued diplomatic relations with Vatican City. The papacy needs to retain that political liaison to fulfill her overall and ultimate goal. And the Pope also has his official nuncio or ambassador in the United States, to shape U.S. Vatican relations and influence in U.S. foreign policy. And the Vatican will continue to strengthen geopolitical ties with the United States. 
while most of us will be distracted and the world is carrying down a road of no return, the papacy's true colors will start to come out when you start to see her supporting the US energy wars. This is a continuation of Cold War politics when these two kingdoms strengthen their unholy alliance. But what may shock people is that the United States has been fighting wars on behalf of the Vatican for years. Let us hold fast to our confession of faith. The path ahead may be treacherous, but God has promised to protect his people. So, whatever the future holds, don't be afraid because Jesus Christ is in control. Amen.